Welcome to the Musicians Creating Prosperity podcast, where you'll discover business, mindset, and leadership strategies to put your music business on autopilot. I'm your host, Dr. Fabiana Clore, pianist and former university professor turned seven-figure entrepreneur dedicated to empowering artists worldwide. Whether you're a seasoned musician or other creative entrepreneur, this podcast is your guide to financial, artistic, and lifestyle freedom. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Musicians Creating Prosperity podcast. I am Dr. Fabiana Clore, your host, and excited to talk to you about today's topic. In our previous episode, we brought together the idea of autopilot and how it can be applied towards revolutionizing your music business model. If you haven't listened to episode two, make sure you look for it. And this is going to serve as the foundation to today's episode. Now we're going to talk about autopilot as it relates to your back end business procedures and systems so that not only can you change your model where you can teach in a way that does not trade time for money, but now you can actually run the business in a way where you are not the bottleneck and you're not the one that has to be responsible for completing all of the different procedures in your business. You see, I want you to envision what would it look like if you were to take some time off from your business, a week off, two weeks off, a month off, could your business continue running without, without you? Could it actually continue growing without you? The answer is yes. Congratulations. You are well on your path to having a freedom based business that will empower you to have the lifestyle that you want and deserve. But if the answer is no, this means that you need to consider some serious changes in the way you run your business. And it starts with you. If you are right now doing all of the jobs in your business, you are doing the marketing, the sales, the servicing of your clients, the financial management, it is not uncommon for a starting entrepreneur to do all the jobs. And believe me, I've been there. When I started my music academy, my husband and I did all the jobs. We ran the business. We taught piano every day, one-on-one -on -one lessons. We cleaned the academy. We administrated, you know, the, the, the different processes. We managed the faculty, you name it. We did it all. And five years after we were no longer even there. We were in Texas and the business was running, running itself in Florida. How did we do that? by creating systems and removing ourselves from the procedures. Now, the good news is that you don't need to wait five years to start doing that. By listening to this podcast, my hope is that you are going to have the strategies and the insights to start thinking now in how can you build a business that can run on autopilot? How can you start reverse engineering? What are the systems you need to put in place now, whether you are just a mighty team of one or you have other people on your plate? Having team members already does not necessarily ensure that you have built a freedom based business. If you are finding yourself having to make all of the major decisions in the business, if everyone is coming to you all the time with questions and everything needs to be run through you, then you are still enabling dependency and is going to limit the potential growth and self sufficiency of your business. So let's talk about some of the ways you can create more autonomy in the way your business is run. Let's start with sales. One of the things you want to be able to do is make sure that you master the ability to have impactful conversations with prospective clients before you even think about delegating the sales of your business to anyone, you need to master it first. This is the only way you're going to be able to break down the strategies and the conversations and the nuances that you have in your business and that no one else will really understand. So although there's sales, trainings, there are sales processes, there are strategies, there are books, there's resources, you know, and this is something that we definitely want to dive in as a skill to be learned. Ultimately, your business is going to be unique. It's going to have certain nuances. So you want to take sales extremely seriously, just as you did learning your instrument, honing your craft. Sales is a skill that needs to be learned with discipline. And until you don't master sales yourself, don't expect someone else to come in and master that for you. So that's one of the things that you cannot just delegate quickly, unlike other areas of the business where I'm going to talk about in a minute, such as operations and administration, sales is the one thing that you need to commit to becoming a master and really understanding your client's psychology. 
the ability to be a positive influence in their decision-making process and empower your clients to invest in themselves and take that leap of faith to work with you. Because ultimately, the only way that they are going to get the results that they want is if they actually go through the whole journey that you have laid out for them. If they're just, you know, tipping, dipping their, their toes in the water, but they're not really jumping fully into the pool, they will only be able to reach certain levels of success and they will not get the full picture. So one of the things before you even think about putting the sales on autopilot is committing to mastering it yourself. Now, the operations of your business is a different story. When it comes to the operations, at, when I refer to operations, I'm talking about the back end procedures, uploading and downloading data, entering information about your systems, creating procedures, standard operating procedures, um, dealing with uploading of content online and social media, creating graphics, creating editing videos, anything that does not involve you being in your zone of genius, you being behind a camera, you being behind a microphone is typically something that you are going to want to offload as quickly as possible so that you're not wasting your time and honestly compromising the growth of your business because you are doing things that are not what you should do. Now, don't get me wrong. You may be good at it. Many of the musicians that I work with are incredibly, you know, fast paced and, and fast action takers, and they just love jumping in and doing things and learning. But the problem with that is that just because you're good at it does not mean you should spend your time on it. It's so important that you discern, you create a discerning criteria, a judgment around what are the most profit producing activities for you to do and how can you focus on those and not get distracted with other things. So my recommendation is when it comes to operations, anything that is administrative data entry, uploading, downloading, um, editing, um, whatever it is that you do in your business as an online musician or creative entrepreneur, you are going to want to pass that on as quickly as possible. Okay. Now, when it comes to marketing, that is going to be really interesting because the truth is sales and marketing go hand in hand. If you have a good marketing strategy, you will attract better quality clients and you will be able to have a smoother sales process. But if your marketing is not dialed in and then you are attracting people with the wrong messaging, you yourself are not clear in what is it that you do that makes you different? How do you set yourself apart? Then you are accidentally going to send a diluted message out into the world that's only going to confuse those of those of you those who want to work with you. So you want to make sure that before you start focusing on developing your marketing department and potentially delegating it at some point, you need to have complete clarity around what is it that you do, how is it impactful for your potential clients. And who are the best clients that are going to benefit and value what you are doing right now, right? And this is can, this can be learned in a really cool formula that will put, put this all in perspective, right? It's called the 3S formula. You want to look for what are your clients doing right now wrong and what is the specific problem that they have? So you think about the first S is the specificity of the problem. It cannot be a broad problem. It needs to be something specific. So how can you start talking about the problems that your clients have in a very specific way? The other part is who are the clients that you want to attract, right? How are you going to attract the people who really want what you have? And how are you going to communicate clearly what you can do for them? Well, if you don't know who you're talking to, again, it's going to be diluted and you're just going to be talking to everyone. And if you talk to everyone, you talk to no one. So you need to make sure that you have complete clarity around not just the specific problem that you're solving, but who is having that problem? Who are you trying to help? And the final S is what is the specific way in which you help your clients fix that problem? It's not enough to help people by saying you will do things better. You will get them fa get there faster. You will improve. You need to have a particular framework, a way of helping people that is different than other ways that other people help them. Right now, even though you may not think you have competition or you may not think people are doing the same thing that you are doing, in the eyes of your clients, they see other options. They may not be comparable to yours, but they still see competitors. They are considering other options. There's an array of opportunities for them. So unless you have a unique framework, a proprietary process, a way of helping your clients get that unique result, then it will not land, it will not be effective, and you may be 
disappointed with the types of clients that you end up bringing into your business, right? So marketing needs to be specific and you need to be understanding how can you communicate what you do, who you do it for, and how it helps them in a unique way. And so that once you have that down, then you can actually start delegating more of the marketing systems. You can bring people in to start, you know, spreading your content. One of the things that I love uh, helping musicians do is understanding that not because you are online every day, which you should, ideally you want to have a consistent presence on social media, but it should not be at the expense of your time. You do not need to be posting things yourself every day, all day. You can actually create systems, automate, delegate the posting of your content and focus on just building it once or twice a week for like an hour or two, right? Or you could also batch create it for like a full day in the, in the month and just, just have everything ready. But when it comes to posting the content, scheduling the content, all of those things should be done ideally by an operations assistant, right? And again, if right now it's just you, it's okay. You can create these roles and you can have very defined tasks. And once you're able to bring in some people to take that off your plate, it'll be very, very easy and straightforward because even from the beginning stages of your business, you identified this as an operational task, this other thing as a sales task, this other thing as a marketing task. So you need to have it very, very clear as if you were running different departments from the beginning. Trust me on this. If you work in this way and you start running a business with departments, with very clear roles, expectations, metrics of success, what does success look like for your operations assistant? What does success look like for your sales? What does success look like for the marketing side of business? Let's talk about finances now. When you're looking at financial management, that's one of the things that I would actually recommend you offload as quickly as possible. Don't be like me and my husband. When we started our music school in 2011, we thought we could do QuickBooks. <laughs> and we spent, I think, the first couple of years learning about QuickBooks, spending so much time on QuickBooks and trying to figure out how to categorize things and this and that, much to the dismay of our accountant at the time who kept telling us, why are you doing your own bookkeeping? You guys are pianists. You guys should not be doing the bookkeeping. But at the beginning, unlike you know, like most entrepreneurs, we did not understand the importance of really delegating and getting stuff off our plate and not trying to, you know, kick a dead horse as the saying goes and just trying to force this new information into our skill set. Instead, we should have been focusing on marketing and building the sales part of our business and all of the things that are more directly to our intellectual property and what we needed to deepen and, and become more proficient to grow the business. But no, we were stubborn. We kept doing the books until finally, I think at three or four years into running the business, we hired a bookkeeper. So once again, you don't need to make the same mistake. If you are starting your business or you already have a business and you're doing your own bookkeeping, do not do that. Like just find someone you can offload that you, it will be in better hands less room for probably for a human error, and it will free up your bandwidth, your energy to focus on the things that need your guidance, your vision, content creating, sales, conversations, all the things that are actually going to move the needle in your business, right? So we've talked about sales, we've talked about marketing, we've talked about operations, and we've talked about finances. Now, obviously, when it comes to accounting, legal infrastructure, those are also things that you're going to want to get people to help you with to make sure that you are always consulting with professionals as it relates to the more nuanced aspects of your business. Um, I do believe you should commit to being financially literate. You should understand enough of the financial models, how to see uh, and make decisions around what comes in and out of your business, how the cash flow is being managed. So I am not saying that you should not be involved in the financials of your business. What I'm specifically focusing on is the administrative side of finances, like bookkeeping, like clearing and reconciling the books. All of those things are more fit in the hands of an actual professional bookkeeper than on your hands. But you should still, just like in sales and marketing, you should still be informed of what happens in your business. What is coming in? What is coming out? How much is being left? What is the forecast? How much is coming in next month? How much does that compare to last month? What are my projections for next year, right? So all of these important financial considerations, you definitely want to commit to mastering, but then ultimately having people that can guide, guide you into truly understanding how to make decisions based on this data, right? And looking for people, I mean, depending on your stage in business, you may hire someone, but you may also simply 
Look for mentors that can guide you and give you the frameworks and structures. Sometimes you may even have a relative around you that would be happy to, you know, take a look at what you've got going on and just give you some insights as it relates to the more of the financial side of things. Do not worry about whether or not you can afford to delegate this. My recommendation is build the roles, create the definitions of success, break down the processes that need to take place in each of these roles. Start with simple guidelines, simple standard operating procedures. If you haven't heard of SOPs, or if you have heard of them, these are your keys to freedom. Because if you can document what you do in every area of your business, then when people are ready to come in and take it off your plate, or when you're ready to hire someone, or even when you want to change staff, like you don't want someone in your team to have complete control over a procedure or a system in your business. And if that person leaves, then there's no way you can transfer that information to the next person. That's risky, right? So for multiple reasons, you need to be documenting all of the procedures that are happening. Even if you're the one doing all of them, there needs to be documentation. You need to be uh, using, you know, things like just like loom loom is L O O M. It's a great resource that you could do screen recordings. You could record your computer showing what you do, how you do this and make two minute video, 10 minute video, 30 minute video, whatever it takes to start documenting your procedures and creating this library of trainings that will ultimately be in the hands of your team when you're ready to delegate. Okay. And when I say delegate, you can look for people for hire. You could look for, for contractors. You could look for interns. You could look for family members. Uh, you could even talk to your significant other. I mean, never think that just not having the resources to invest in your team is a justification for not delegating and not envisioning what it would look like for you to have an autopilot business. If you start thinking about this since now and envision what it would look like for your business to run itself, if you wanted to go on vacation or if God forbid you have an emergency, you need to know that your business can continue growing without you there. So start building all those systems. Let me know what your questions are. I would love to hear from you what your key takeaways are. We covered a lot in today's episode, but my hope is that you are going to start thinking as a CEO rather than a solo musician entrepreneur, right? When you envision what you want, whether or not it's, it's happening yet, whether or not your reality is demonstrating that it's possible, when you are clear around what you want your business to look like and the lifestyle you want it to provide for you, you are going to start making better decisions around how to reverse engineer that ultimate vision, that, you know, key to freedom. That is what your business is supposed to do for you. Okay. Thank you for listening and let's prosper together. Mm -hmm.